What's up, guys? I'm back, and um, I'm bringing you something a little different. And this is a Mass Effect discussion that I decided to have with a couple guys. And I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves. Um, if you guys have been following me, you know about KS already. KS, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, my name's KS. That is pretty much all that I have to say. All right, why don't we start next with um, Kevin? Uh, yeah, it's Infinite or Illinois. Oh my god, I messed up already. <laughs> um, this is Infinite. Um, you could call me as Kevin. Um, my my channel is mostly about Mass Effect Three and SSX for now. And last but not least, hi everybody. This is uh, I'm Rachel. Uh, for those that follow me, I am May Shuey. I am a YouTuber. I do Let's Plays. I also stream video games. All right, now. Well, quick warning for you guys. We're going to be talking about Mass Effect 3 in the broad sense, including the ending. So if you haven't played the game by now, you might want to just click away and come back when you've played the game so you can hear our opinions. But um, with that out of the way, let's um, start with what we thought of the game. Now, I personally thought the game was fantastic in pretty much almost every way. It, in my opinion, it wasn't that as good as Mass Effect 2, but I can s see why it wasn't. But, uh, Chaos, what was your thoughts on the game? Um, I didn't think it was as good as Mass Effect 1, and I felt that it kind of failed to... In some regards, it failed to make me really feel for some of the actions and the characters. How about you next, Kevin? Um... Since this is my first Mass Effect game I actually played, I've seen walkthroughs of Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect. Um, I thought the adventure all the way to the ending was amazing. The dialogue, the different uh, emotions through the character, the way you connected with them was very interesting. I haven't played a, a game like this. Hang on, you guys. I'll be right back. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Well, I'm just going to fill out this gap while she's gone. Um, well, I... What, I don't understand, Chaos. Why don't you explain why you didn't think it was so good? Um, I don't know. It just felt more like something. I don't know. It just felt. It just felt weird. The dialogue didn't really feel smooth to me, and it felt a bit. It felt a bit kind of staccato in that it didn't really seem to flow as well from segment to segment. It was more like you go here. And then you go there next, and then later you end up being the game. But it didn't really make me feel as though I was really accomplishing something in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I can definitely see why you think that. I mean, I can see that there are many cracks in the game. Like, it definitely feels like it was a rushed project. But the, if you can see why it was a rushed project, I mean, this is one of the biggest games coming out for 2012. So I can definitely see why they would rush to get this as done as possible. So you kind of have to take this game with a grain of salt when you play it. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. All right. Well, I had a phone call. <clears throat> it's okay. It's your turn. Okay. Um, I thought the game was pretty good. Um, I'm not really... I haven't really been into Mass Effect, but um, I do believe the second one was a lot... Loved. And the third one was really good, except for the ending... It just didn't make sense. Yeah, I know the ending is kind of a hot topic that I feel yeah. like we should kind of leave it for now because we might that might take a lot of time to talk about. Mm -hmm. So let's just get this quick stuff out of the way. First off, let's know like what specifically everyone did in this game. Like I I played as a Paragon on my first playthrough. Did Paragon choices? Chaos, what did you do? Um, I play as a renegade, and I single-handedly wiped out both the Quarians and the Geth. Wow. <laughs> Damn. But, for instance. How did, how did you manage that? Like, first... Um, I cited, well, I romanced Tally to continue my romance from Mass Effect 2. Then I decided I would need the Geth to fight the Reaper, so I upgraded them, and they slaughtered the Quarians. And then at the end, thing, I chose to destroy all synthetic life. Damn, so you really did annihilate not, well, not only two species, <laughs> but you also left everyone on Earth to starve also. 
since you destroyed all technology. Oh no, no, I, I destroyed Earth too. I didn't have enough war assets. Oh, so you literally, <laughs> you literally killed everyone. Yep. Good job. Damn. All right. Well, uh, Kevin, how about you? What did you do? Um, I just did whatever felt right, to be honest. Like every uh, dialogue, every um thing I had, you know, options to choose what I wanted to say. I just chose what felt right. In so between. you didn't really focus on Paragon or Renegade. You just felt like what no. was best at the time. Yeah, and right now I'm doing Paragon on my Insanity run. All right, how about uh, Rachel? Um, I decided to do Paragon because, like, that's usually what I always do with these kind of games. I do the correct choices, and then I'll play it again and then do whatever I want to do. All right, well, um, who would everyone romance? <laughs> I, I romance Tally. I romance Tally too, and she later proceeded to jump off a cliff. Yeah, because you killed her family. Horrible right. person. Kevin, how about you? Um, to be honest, I didn't romance anyone. You didn't? <laughs> no. Um, I found out that you could romance someone after I beat the game. Right now, I'm probably a uh, romance Ashley, which is probably uh, not the best option, but. I heard that, like, when you import a game that, like, an import save from Mass Effect 3 default, when you don't play Mass Effect 1 or 2, it does mostly renegade options from the first two games. Is that true? Um, I imported my Vanguard, but I haven't really seen those kind of options yet, since I'm, I'm probably, right now I just finished uh, catching Dr. Eva, I think her name is. So I'm not completely sure. But yeah, one of those options, I did have the Renegade option to uh, press the R1. So I'm All right. guessing. What about you, Rachel? <laughs> My shepherd was a bit of a slut. Uh, she, uh, she ro- I romanced Caden in the first game. And then I romanced Thane in the second game. So the third one, when when Thane died, I, um, I couldn't get back with Caden. So I just... I romance Liara. <laughs> Wait, Caden didn't want you back? Nope, he didn't. You, I couldn't. Um, there was like an option you could uh, lie to him, but it, I don't know if it works at all. Uh, he's like, I know you too well, and so it didn't work because uh, I guess that considered I cheated on him or something in the second game. Well, I kind of feel like we should also like talk about some of the great moments we had the game and some of the not so great moments. Mm-hmm. Like, what was your the most um, dramatic death for you guys? Thane's death. Really? I kind of yes. thought I kind of thought Morden's death was um kind of more powerful. That, yeah. yeah. That one too, but <laughs> Thane was um, my favorite character. I love Legion, so when he had yeah. to go, I was like, God damn it. Same here. Yeah, uh, you al- you also killed off the reason why he died too. Well, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> okay um me for me for the reason why i thought morden's death was kind of powerful was because he, he was like he was kind of talking like throughout the mass effect game mass effect 2 mostly i don't i should probably say i haven't played mass effect 1 i've pl- only played mass effect 2 and 3 but in mass effect 2 he's always been on a kind of more personal level like when you ask him why doesn't he like go on a grand scale of helping people he's always like he needs to see a face to be able to connect with them. And then to see him sacrifice himself to save the genophage or cure it, that just kind of like resonated with me. And I know that in some version of his death, he does sing his song that he sang in Mass oh, yep. Effect. He mm-hmm. sang a song in mine. He didn't, that... he didn't sing it with me. Oh, he didn't? Amazing. No, he was most, when he was curing the genophage, he was like, Awesome. The the Krogan are finally free and uplifted. A new beginning for everyone. And then he died instead of singing. Aww. I guess it depends on like whether Eve died or not. He, for me, Eve lived. What happened to you guys? Eve lived. Uh, I think Eve lived. I don't quite remember. Yeah, so how do you know if Eve lived or not, Jean? I mean, Chaos? Um, uh, because I honestly wasn't paying attention during that cutscene. <laughs> well, it's when you, if Eve lives or not, it's more like a cutscene. Like if Eve lived, he's there, she's there with either Rex or Reeve, depending on who you killed, 
And if she didn't live, then you hold a funeral afterwards. I don't remember holding a funeral, so I assume she lived. You see her at the end of the mission after Morden dies. It shows her and Rex and... Yeah. <laughs> so that's I think how I, know I remember she lived. hearing a name. Well, I, I, I guess it kind of attributes to how quickly you beat the game. I mean... Mass Effect, in, I think, is supposed to be a 30 to 40 hour experience. KS beat the game yeah, in seven hours. Seven and a half hours. So wow. he kind of just blew through it with like the least amount of war assets just to get it over with. Because he said before he doesn't like it, the game. I, I saw a guy on Twitch, he, um, his best run is three hours and 17, no, three days and, no, that's correct, three hours and 17 minutes. Wow. So, yeah, it's pretty short. Well, it's, it kind of depends on, like, whether you choose to get immersed into the game, because, mm -hmm. the, like, in Mass Effect 2, I don't know about Mass Effect 1, but in Mass Effect 2, the main story can be beat really quickly as well, but you if you didn't do everything right, your crew would die, mm -hmm. everyone, your ship would explode, all that kind of stuff. So, I am disappointed that Zaid didn't come back as an official crewmate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Zaid was pretty cool. I mean, did... Oh, that's another thing. Who saved their deals? Like, who met Kasumi in DLC in the in the game? Oh, Kasumi! Oh, I didn't meet her. I forgot about her. Yeah, I didn't meet her either. I'm, but I know oh. I started the side quest to meet with her, but I never actually finished it to see what um what she did. I still got the best possible ending, but I never finished that one side quest. Oh. I think that was actually one of the side quests I did do. What happened at the... Um, I think... If I remember correctly, she, like, gets... Well, she acts like she dies from an explosion, but she's just, like, cloaked so that the authorities don't catch her. And then you get the support of, I believe, a Spectre squad for helping them. Oh, and then she, like, goes to work on the Crucible or something? No, she just, like goes on and does her own thing oh that kind of sucks i mean she's pretty smart she could do some good work on the crucible mm -hmm. I th she probably could do more work than the rachni oh that's another thing um who saved the rachni i did i did too and i was um shocked when grunt it looked like he died and then he came back yeah i had a panic attack <laughs> i was like i can't I, I was half expecting him to run out of the cave yelling i am krogan not gonna lie. <laughs> cool. Oh, that if you didn't um import uh, a save with Grunt alive, then the person who replaces him, if you choose to save the Rachni, he doesn't come back. He just dies. So, oh. I guess Grunt is like a perfect Krogan to be able to well, take. It was out. tank bread. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess we should uh, talk about um, what was some of the bad moments we had with the game. Um, KS, how about you? Um, I'd have to say the ending. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's everyone's that bad moment. As simple as that is. Oh, I, th I don't think we got to Kevin in his best moment. Um, best moment. I think the best moment was him, uh, when he was trying to call someone for help when he was on when he just arrived on the planet Earth trying to uh, trying to finish off the Crucible and everything, I think when he met up with Anderson, I think that was a good moment right there. All right. All... Yeah, yeah, just that. All right, how about your uh, best, uh, worst moment? I think when Morden died was the worst moment because he was a real good... Uh, he was very intelligent. I think he could have been uh, very useful at the end. Yeah, I know. I mean, especially with just um, just those shitty endings... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just terrible. I mean, may I'm, I add? Um, did anyone actually side with the Daltras and sabotage the cure? No, I didn't. Because mm -mm. I think that would probably be the dumbest decision anyone could ever make. Mm. Well, actually, why would, you could get an army of Krogan. Look, it's just awesome. Yeah, but <laughs> definition they, of a word. Yeah, but they pretty much already have, like, an army. It's not as big as it could have been if they cured it, because they can, like, pop babies out in, like, a second. But still, I mean, they got the Krogan, and if you were to sabotage the cure, no one would know. I mean, you, you would have to kill Morden, but 
No one would know. So you would get the, the Solarians and the Krogan on your side. And I think if you actually do that, you get both their war assets. Mm. So if you're trying to go for like the best ending, then I think you should um, sabotage the cure. Mm. Although it does come down to a kind of personal level. Like when you invest yeah. yourself into the game, what mm-hmm. which would you really do? I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't... I'm, that's another thing I've noticed. Um, in Mass, I don't know about Mass Effect One, like, cause I said I never played the game. But in Mass Effect Two, playing a Renegade, I've done two playthroughs of that game, Paragon and Renegade. And um, as a Renegade, I felt like I was a real, like a badass, like just being able mm-hmm. to do whatever I wanted and all of that. But in Mass Effect Three, I feel like playing a Renegade is like burning down an orphanage of puppies or something, cause mm-hmm. you do all this bad stuff that I. It seems right to do because it's just so right to get those war assets, but it just, it has to weigh in on you. Yeah. I think that was their point of it to make you think of, um, um, I think, you know, personal or personal level or just get it done kind of way. Yeah. Cause, Cause it's think- a war. Yeah, it is, like, a legit war now because the Reapers are actually here. Like, in mm-hmm. Mass Effect 2, they, you were kind of preparing to, like, wait for them to come. And mm-hmm. even in Arrival, you were still trying to stop them from coming if you guys play that DLC. But I in Mass Effect 3, they're actually here. Yeah. So, I blame the Council for not believing Shepard. Well, you oh, kind of have... Council. I, I, um, I killed the Council in my uh, Mass Effect 1... Because I in, saved them, thinking that they would help me, but no, nope, no, nope, they're just a bunch of bitches. I loved in the first game what you could do. Um, every time you were done with the main mission, you had to report back into them. So every time they would say something like I felt was rude to Shepard, I would um like, "Oops, lost we'll connection." It, <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> I loved it. So like, how, like, wh- what's your favorite Mass Effect game? Yeah. Mass Effect One. Mass Effect 1? Yeah. Right. Uh, how about you, Rachel? What was the question? Your favorite Mass Effect game. Um, uh, I have to say probably the second one. I mean, the third one would... I liked the third one a lot. Again, just that... The lovely ending. It would have been yeah. my favorite. Yeah. I just think um, the ending really ruined it for uh, Mass Effect 3. But uh, Mass, I saw a lot of uh, gameplays of Mass Effect 2. It looks more, uh, it looks more interesting than Mass Effect 3, to be honest. Mhm. Yeah, it kind of like, it's an improvement, but yet, um, like a kind of failure. They've improved on like gameplay and like more having fun killing people, but not really the immersion. Yeah, I heard they balanced out the guns and the powers since the guns I think were a lot more uh, useful than the powers in Mass Effect 2. Mm-hmm. In um, Mass Effect 3, I felt like the powers were extremely overpowered because I did my first run on Mass Effect 3. I barely used my gun. I only used my powers. And I beat that run fairly easy. I mean, the last fight was pretty hard, but the whole game was pretty easy with only using my powers. Well, if you import a save, it takes you from the level you left off, I think, in Mass Effect 2. So automatically, your powers are... When you um, put in the points, are already almost max, so it makes it really yeah. easy. Yeah, and I guess I, I kind of have to see like how it would play out if I were a level one in Mass Effect Three to kind of understand. Oh. Yeah. So who got the Prothean DLC? I, I did. did. I did. I didn't buy it, but I pirated it and I played it on PC. Because <laughs> after that ending, there's no way they're going to get any more money from me. And I gotta say, playing through with uh, that DLC, the Prothean, it kind of, it feels like, let me try and gather my thoughts here. It, it, I hate it when people put um, main characters into DLC. Like um, in Mass Effect 2, Zaid and Kasumi were good teammates, but they never, they were never like really flushed out. I mean, you had a mission with them and you got a new weapon, but then they were just in the ship doing nothing. With this Prothean, he gives you like a whole bunch of backstory when you take him on missions. I took him on every mission just to, because he was a good biotic teammate and because he had a lot to say on all the missions and how it was back in his cycle. 
So I feel like if you didn't get the DLC, you would miss that aspect of the game. It, you could still mm-hmm. play through it, but it just wouldn't be the same because you wouldn't have that same backstory. Yeah. It was, I really didn't think it should have been a DLC because, again, it was kind of a major part of the story. So I don't understand why they would... Well, unless they just wanted money, but <laughs> they would just put us DLC. Especially considering that he's he's the he's not even one of the like the important Crothians. He's a like a grunt, like a soldier. So he ha- mm-hmm. he's been out there and seen all this war. Yeah. I mean, it just I don't know what to say. Bioware needs to get his shit together. <laughs> yeah. They shouldn't have. I mean, said as Mass Effect Three, Dragon Age Two. They've been releasing a lot of. Games, I believe, are a bit subpar. I mean, you, you kind of have to see how they're like with EA now, taking grip, putting their grubby hands into Bioware and telling them what mm-hmm. to do. I mean, with this new extended cut DLC, that's not... Um, oh, that's one thing I want to clarify. They're not going to change the ending. They're just going to clarify their already shitty ending. Yeah, explain it. So yeah. they kind of had to make it free. Otherwise, they would have this backlash from their fans. Mm-hmm. And no one would buy a single Bioware product, and EA yeah. would be fucked out of like um, whatever percentage of money they make for them. Yeah. So I guess um, we should also talk about the ending in, a, I guess, for a little bit. I mean, what's the general consensus on the ending? Consensus on the ending. Um, the lack of choice, since yeah. everything that you did in uh, towards getting to the ending, um it pretty much brings you all towards the same ending. I know. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Not to mention with all the plot holes and such. Yeah. Well, like, you're fighting the Reapers, and that's all you do, and all of a sudden, like, right when that Reaper being hits you, it just, just this weird twist. All of a sudden, it just doesn't make sense. Like, you don't even get to see your comrades fighting or your war assets fighting. You don't see anything. And all of a sudden they just throw this huge, weird decision-making out of nowhere. And so it just doesn't really play out with it. I mean, my standpoint from it is I see the lack of choice, and that's also a problem. But my main big problem is that it didn't provide um, much explanation as to what happened to your squad mates and such. Yeah, it just left you off a cliff. Um, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> Again, it just when it came, like when you met the little ghost kid or whatever, you're just wondering wh- what happened. Like, what is going on here? Where I'm so con- like, it's just a very confusing moment. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going going brain dead. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, I'll I'll fill in for you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think that Beam hits uh right in between all his squad mates and everything. I think when he gets up, I think that's an illusion or something. Cause how can he be the only one? And Anderson that's already up there somehow. How yeah, that part. Only one weird. up, and all his other squad mates over there just dead. It doesn't make any sense. I just think it's an illusion. Well, um, Infinite. Um, do you, did you do you know much about the indoctrination theory? Um, I read it, and there's a lot of people criticizing it for uh, just they, they just didn't um, see what was relevant. So. Like, I like the indoctrination theory a lot because it explains, like, you know, if that's a whole like a dream or something. But if that's a dream, then when Shepard wakes up, it shouldn't have ended there. It should have woken up, and then we see, you know, like the very beginning before the beam hit. You could you should be still be able like like none of that stuff happened since it was a dream and then it should have continued on from there that's the thing is that why i didn't like it is because it just ended you know when it should have continued on yeah Yeah, i feel like like, um the ending ending of mass Mass effect 3 3, it wasn't really really an ending ending. it more like the game game just just stopped stopped. and the indoctrination theory does a good job of trying to end it Mm -hmm. but in all essence it's just a theory developed by the fans it could be true because they provide a lot of hints in the game but I honestly doubt Bioware could think of something that intricate with the ending they managed to write. Yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I kind of wish that you could, like, talk to Star Child and kind of try and reason with him and try to make him 
realize why organics felt the way they did and just see kind of what he had to say about it a bit more. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, you don't have really dialogue that is, like, the dialogue indicative of Mass Effect dialogue. You you kind of just, um he kind of says something and you respond like, well, we need this because we wouldn't have souls. You, you don't really explain anything. Mm-hmm. Plus, the fact that Shepard had that kind of choice, it kind of makes me, like, my opinion on the indoctrination theory is, um, it sounds good in essence, but... I don't think it's true. And mm-hmm. this new DLC that's coming out, it kind of, I think it's going to prove the indoctrination theory wrong. And when that happens, a lot of angry fans are going to try and commit another retake Mass Effect movement that's going to fail. <laughs> well, it all depends on how they explain it. You know, even if the indoctrination theory isn't going to be true, it all depends on how they're going to explain this, I think, on how fans are going to react. Because hopefully they explain it really well so we it answers all our questions. That's another thing is that when we heard that this will be the last of Shepard's story, we're like, okay, so this will answer a lot of our questions of what happened in the first and second game. And we'll resolve everything. And, you know, since it's the last one. But because of this, um, and we're all thinking this is the last of the series, that's, I think, why there was such an uproar about it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean... Um... Another thing about the the ending, it kind of feels disconnected from not only Mass Effect 3, but the Mass Effect themes in general. Because in, I don't know about Mass Effect 1 again, but in Mass Effect 2, you ha- had the sense of unity and trying to unite people. And in Mass Effect 3, you did that to a degree with trying to cure the genophage and all that and getting the war assets. But the ending is just kind of a choice that's left only up to Shepard and not the unity of the entire galactic community. Mm-hmm. And I attribute that disconnection to the fact that Mass Effect 3 wasn't written by the same person who wrote Mass Effect 1 and 2. It was, in fact, there was a completely different ending in mind for Mass Effect 3, which um, I'll try and summarize quickly. Um, in Mass Effect 3, I don't know if you in, remember in Mass Effect 2, but in um, in Mass Effect 1 and 2, they made references to like how there was um, dark matter. And in Mass Effect 2, during Tally's recruitment mission, there was that sun that was currently constantly damaging your shields and it has something to do with dark matter that they couldn't explain and they never really elaborated upon that in three but the way that was supposed to take place is back um way before the reapers were created there was a problem with dark matter and it was going to overtake the universe eventually and it led the civilization at that time whatever race it happened to be to try and find a way to stop it so they essentially turned all of their civilization into the first reaper which was Harbinger. And in Mass Effect 3, it it was going to explain that um, the Reapers were still trying to find this way and that their reasoning for um, harvesting these civilizations was that it would somehow help to eradicate that dark matter. And your ultimate choice was because, um, for some reason, humans had a special ability in them because of their so diverse, whereas the other races are kind of either different colored or just the same it's because humans were so diverse they had a special trait in them and your final choice in mass effect 3 was supposed to be do you let humanity get harvested to create another reaper that would finally end this dark matter problem or would you refuse and um, find another way to stop it even though you barely had any time left to stop it and i felt um even though that ending that ending doesn't really sound good compared to the ending we got, even though this ending was pretty shitty. Because it wouldn't really... That just feels like a black black and white choice as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, I guess it's just... I don't know, it's confusing as hell. Especially yeah, very. <laughs> they haven't explained a lot of things. That's where people... I think another reason why people were unsatisfied with the ending is because um, the ending really just showed you that there wasn't going to really be a Mass Effect 4. There's like, you know, a high chance. And I guess people wanted a sequel, maybe. I mean, that could be, you know, another reason why. Well, that's what I think. Yeah, they really kind of left the ending open to interpretation and theory. 
just so they can milk it for what it's got. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I heard that EA told them to keep the ending open so that they could make more. And I think <laughs> Bioware was like, okay, open ending, let's just do that. And Yeah, it kind of feels like they approached Mass Effect 3 as more of a job than a project they were really well developed in. Well developed in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I honestly would really prefer to kind of I've always liked games like the beginning of series like that kind of origin story like Dragon Age Origins. I mm-hmm. that is definitely one of my favorite games because it it kind of sets the tone without kind of letting too much out, which is one of the reasons why I liked Mass Effect One so much, is that I kind of set this platform where you know this is what's happening and there's so much room for interpretation that you don't really know what to expect but at the same time you're kind of hopeful that and you kind of have these ideas in your head that you'd really like to see implemented which is why I kind of usually really enjoy the first game in the series because the fans tend to have a lot more say in what happens in the sequel. Yeah, that's true. I mean, because um, in Mass Effect 2, like, I heard that in Mass Effect 1, since it's the beginning, it, that's the story. But in Mass Effect 2, they had all this potential to try and make it go on these divergent paths based on your choice in Mass Effect 1. But in the end, in Mass Effect 2, it felt kind of like it was just flavor text. Like, um, if you didn't do this or you did do this, it was like a text dialogue that would pop up, not really anything important. And in Mass Effect 3, I felt like they should have made the game diverge in many different ways based on your choices because this is the end of the game i mean it would have taken longer to develop but it would have paid off in the long run because fans would have been satisfied and we wouldn't be left with questions that are left unanswered and all of this propaganda that we, it's just as it's just not good mm-hmm. well i guess we should um wrap up i guess um if you guys want to subscribe to any of these guys on their YouTube channels. I'll leave links in the video description. And um, anything you guys want to say? Anything you guys want to advertise or plug? This unit has no more to say. I have nothing else to say. That's pretty much it. Mm, nothing on my end. All right. Well, uh, thanks, you guys, for listening. Be sure to leave a like and favorite if you like this video. And be sure to subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video I make.